Hello, I'm Eddie Jones and welcome back to Get Modern. Today we're going to cover uh, part B uh, in our step three of our uh, setting up your Intune day one. This is part of the Intune uh, handbook series and we've already covered part A for step three which is setting up your users. This is going to be groups today. Um, so why do we need groups? Well, essentially groups are required for targeting your policies and applications uh, so you're gonna need groups to do that and also for controlling access and permissions so the two main user types really are or use types are assignments and RBAC assignments as already mentioned you want to assign your settings that you create down to your devices or users and the RBAC being the uh, role-based act administration control this is quite typical and uh, quite normal you'll find this on Active Directory, your on-prem, uh, for example, setup, and in that situation, all you're doing is structuring and organising your users and devices in a manner that you can determine where your policies and your apps are going to go to. Um, the way in which you um, deploy these groups, they can either be set up on a manual basis, or they can be dynamic. And with dynamic, you've got the power of adding uh, a criteria whereby you can uh, where um, users or groups uh, users or devices on enrollment or um, actually after as you already have your groups can dynamically be added as a member into those groups depending on the criteria that you set that's quite powerful uh, and obviously helps you when you're kind of uh, on your day-to-day -day administration so you can also uh, have nested groups um, nested groups will allow you, for example, to uh, again introduce a, a structure. It may be you've got multiple HR departments across different locations, um, but you want an umbrella HR group which, um, which you have the nested groups under. And you can create dynamic criteria which, when users enroll or devices enroll, it may be that those devices will only be assigned as a member to a specific location. Um, you will need to make sure that you've got uh, the various settings within those devices or users set up for the dynamic rule to, to occur. Um, but that's quite a powerful feature. So with that, we'll go into the Endpoint Manager portal and have a look at setting some of these up. So I've got a, uh, this is my test tenant really. Um, if I go into groups, what I'm going to do is create a new group. Uh, going to keep it as a security group, although it could be a Microsoft 365 group. I'm going to call this test user group. I'm uh, going to leave the description, and for the time being, it can be assigned. And this is where you would uh, determine whether it's a dynamic, uh, dynamic user group. But I'm going to keep this as assigned for now, and I'm going to create that group. So as you can see, I've got the test user group created. If I go into that group uh, and then go into members, at that point I can either I can uh, hit the add members and choose a specific user. So let's let's add Alex to that, and it will add Alex. And another way in which I could do it, I can actually go into individual users. Uh, so let's say Dan. Um, and I can look at um, look at the groups that that, uh, that person or that user is part of. If he's not part of that group, I can hit the memberships. I can um, have a look at, uh, find the test user group, for example, there it is, and select and add him in. Okay, um, so that's adding users to a, a group I've set up. Now what I'm gonna do is go in and create a dynamic group. So let's create a dynamic group uh, we'll keep that as security again. We'll keep, call this test dynamic group. But this time I'm going to choose a dynamic user. And then what you'll have is the dy dynamic user members. Okay, and I need to add a dynamic query. For this particular test case, I'm going to choose a property which is a company name. Uh, I'm going to say my operator is equals and my value is BT for British Telecom. I then go ahead and hit the add expression and it'll add the details into the rule syntax. I hit save 
and create and then that will be created now at this point there won't be any members um, if I go into the, that back into that group you'll see if I have a look at members there's no members in there so what I need to do is make sure that uh, certain users have got that setting uh, already in place so that they'll dynamically be added so if I go into Alex for example and I edit Alex's details call that BT make sure it's the same case hit save and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Dan as well um, the user Dan I'm going to edit Dan and make him a member of BT also save that and then we'll go back into groups um, and we're going to test the have a look at the go back into the test dynamic group um, and Alex has already been uh, added uh, based on that that criteria we set and it may be that it, it takes a minute or two for those users to come through uh, which in my experience it can take up to a few minutes it's not always automatic um, if you're enrolling uh, a new device if this was a, div a device and dynamic device group then as part of that enrollment they will automatically be added to those groups okay um, if I then want to uh, delete a group I can quite easily go in and uh, select that group specifically and hit delete or if I go back um, and just highlight that I can do multiple I can delete multiple groups at the same time and then um, and then I can hit the delete at the top there okay uh, we'll just quickly go back into this dynamic group see the members no it hasn't come through yet um, but it will do eventually I think it's worth mentioning also that um, and confirming that you can synchronize your your on-prem Active Directory groups um, into the Azure AD. To achieve this, you'll need to deploy Azure AD Connect on your on-premise platform. But when you do that, there are certain restrictions and settings you need to comply with. So, um, out of the box, uh, Azure AD Connect uh, will allow you to synchronize your groups, but um, you must have less than fifty thousand members in those groups, and um, that's consistent with uh, when setting up the Azure AD groups, by the way. They have the same uh, enforced uh, restriction there. Um, there's, there's a, there are also a number of uh, groups that are excluded from synchronization. So you've got the built-in security groups. Um, you've also, uh, it won't uh, synchronize the primary group memberships and uh, does not support synchronizing the dynamic distribution groups um, when it comes to mail enabled groups there are certain settings that you you've got to comply with so it's worthwhile having a look at these i'll add these uh, links into the video details so please go ahead and have a look at them okay so go ahead and try that out yourself this is a very quick uh, video uh, there's not uh, a huge amount of of detail that you can give in this area but it is like I say quite an essential step and you will need to go ahead and do this before you can uh, start enrolling, enrolling your users and devices okay with that thanks very much for now please catch up and subscribe and uh, have a look at our other videos uh, we've got 10 steps in the list uh, work through them and obviously uh, send any comments that you may have thanks very much